Hey, use code Bengal at sign up on FanDuel. You get a free $20 to play with. Also, check out my links down in the description for Twitter, Twitch, second and third channels for all different types of content that you might enjoy. So be sure to check it out and let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with a another video and today we are back doing more predictions. Of course, you guys know that I did a playoff predictions video and up to this point, I've only gotten one game wrong and that was the Eagles-Bears game where a tipped field goal <laughs> where Cody Parkey sent it up and it just got grazed, barely. And then, of course, hit the uh, the post and then the crossbar and and uh, went no good and the Eagles won. But So as you guys may know, I'm pretty good at predictions, or at least it, it appears to be that way. Today, we're going to be predicting the NFL honors. So that's MVP, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, off Defensive Rookie of the Year, I, you know, all those ones, right? So I think a lot of these are clear-cut, and then some of them are really, really close. We'll get to those in a minute. We're going to start off with Comeback Player of the Year. I think this one is fairly obvious. This one has to be Andrew Luck. I don't know how you could say anybody else. Andrew Luck was a supposedly a washed player. He wasn't good. Nobody wanted him. This is not a guy that can come out and compete and be one of the top quarterbacks in the league. When I listed him still in my top 10, I believe at number 5 overall, with that quarterback video I released, uh... Uh, a little under a year ago, people were like, Andrew Luck? How is Andrew Luck a, a still a top 10 quarterback? Well, you know why? It's because the ability doesn't necessarily go away, even though he's an injured player. So, in 2015, didn't have that great of a season, played injured, only played in 7 games, 15 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, threw for under 2,000 yards, 2016 comes back, plays 15 games, still playing a little bit injured, but throws for 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns, only 13 interceptions. Great season, and then gets injured even worse. Sits out all of 2017. People are saying to me, Andrew Luck's not the same quarterback. Nobody cares about Andrew Luck anymore. His time has passed. He's an injury-prone quarterback. It's over for him. But guess what? He comes back swinging in 2018 leads the trash Colts roster say what you will about the Colts man they have a bad roster they started out what one in five and then got red hot thankfully due to Andrew Luck going off threw for 4,593 yards his completion percentage was over 67 percent which I will tell you is uh, well above the league average 39 touchdowns and only 15 interceptions. He came back with a vengeance. Threw for over 70 yards per attempt. This is a guy that came out with something to prove. And I don't even think there's much uh, competition, if any at all, for this award. This is Andrew Luck by a wide, wide margin. Now for Defensive Rookie of the Year. I had this penciled in as Zerwin James for uh, a while now. And as you can see, clearly, it is not Derwin James winning this award. For me, I do have Darius Leonard. And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think overall, Derwin James had a more impressive season. You know, take that as you will. They're burst, uh, both first-team All-Pro. But, like, Darius Leonard, who had, like, seven sacks or so, we'll get to his numbers in a minute. Uh, and we'll talk about why I think Derwin James had a slightly more impressive season. But I think when it comes down to it, Darius Leonard just has the numbers over the play. And the numbers, I think, is what's going to push him over the top. He really did have a great year. Led the league in tackles by a, a lot, like 20 or so, right? 163 combined tackles. 111 of those were solo. Had 12 tackles for loss. Eight quarterback hits. Forced, a, uh, forced four fumbles, had a recovery, or two recoveries as well, and um, eight pass deflections is all right, two picks, but it's just those tackles, I think that's what's going to what's gonna win it for him. The thing is, he can't cover at all. He really can't. His cover ability is probably among the worst of any starting linebacker in the NFL. It's really, really bad, and 
you know, you think maybe that's why he had all those tackles is because he can't cover worth a damn. He can't cover at all. And I know he had two interceptions. Interceptions don't really uh, matter that much in terms of your overall coverability on a down-to-down basis. Eight pass deflections over an entire season is a pretty limited amount, I will say. And all those tackles, I think, they're boosted because he can't cover, and he's he's giving up so many completions uh, in front of him. So, you, you know, you can kind of kind of knock him there. And Derwin James, to me, was a super, super impressive player. He had an incredible season. His tackles were there as well. Had 105, three interceptions as well. But really what it comes down to is he was solid in a number of different roles for the Chargers. I know they used... Uh, a number of different players in that nickel role, Derwin James occasionally being one of them. Really, it was Desmond King, though, but Derwin James proved he can play over the top as a safety, in the box as a safety. We saw him in that linebacker role against the Ravens in the wild card round of the playoffs. Derwin James is a versatile player that can really do anything. Of course, he was also first team all pro his rookie year, as was uh, Darius Leonard. And this was so, so close for me. He had 13 pass deflections, pretty good for a safety, three interceptions as well. He had six quarterback hits, just two fewer than a linebacker in Darius Leonard. Four tackles for loss from the free safety or strong safety spot is really good as well. Three and a half sacks, and those weren't scheme sacks like you have with Darius Leonard where he's coming in unblocked on a blitz and getting to the QB. It's not like these are super impressive sacks, and I'm not hating on Darius Leonard. I think he had a fantastic season. I think he will win Defensive Rookie of the Year because of those numbers. He just is, isn't a guy that can cover well. And I think the overall better player right now certainly is Derwin James. And I wish that he could win Defensive Rookie of the Year. And I, I suppose he can. I suppose he can. But um, I think they're going to give it to Darius Leonard. I do. I think he's going to edge it out. And I think Derwin James is a slightly better player right now. I love Darwin. I think he had an incredible season. Unfortunately, this time around, and uh, he'll never be able to if he doesn't this year, <laughs> he doesn't win Rookie of the Year. All right, Offensive Rookie of the Year. As you can see, I do have this going to Baker Mayfield, and I know a lot of people are going to be really, really mad at this. And trust me, I am a Giants fan, and of course, people now are going to be a Giants fan, not picking Saquon Barkley for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Some fan you are. I don't. I don't think that matters at all. I love Saquon Barkley. He's a monster. He's a beast. Had a great season. 1,300 plus yards. 11 touchdowns. Average 5 per carry. And that's not even taking into account what he did as a receiver. Caught 91 passes. A rookie record. 721 yards. 4 touchdowns. As a receiver. So he had 15 total touchdowns. Over 2,000 total yards from scrimmage. What a season. For Saquon Barkley, and I, I do wish that he could win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I think that there's a good chance that he does, but I think it goes to Baker Mayfield, and I think the reason he's slightly going to edge out Saquon Barkley is because he's a quarterback. There is more value to that, and you look at what he did for the Browns since becoming the starter, uh, essentially in Week 4. He came in in Week 3, I know, against the Jets and led that comeback to beat the Jets 21-17, but I think there's more value to the quarterback position over over what a running back brings to the table. I think that's very, very obvious. And Baker was super, super impressive this year. And it goes beyond the stats. Of course, 27 touchdowns is a rookie record as well for a quarterback. And he did so only in 13 starts. Through 14 interceptions, that's not really that high of a total. Of course, uh, for him, that's uh, more than one per game. Or one per start, I should say exactly one per game or it's kind of weird because he came in at like what halftime or so but I don't know man there's so much value to the quarterback position it is the most important position in football because with a good quarterback you can win games with a bad quarterback your team really isn't going that far in general you know from from both ends of the spectrum you're looking at like you know uh a Josh McCown versus an Aaron Rodgers and I know the Packers weren't great this year but we're not really talking about that right now talking about Baker and he really took over and took a team that won zero games zero games before Baker Mayfield arriving over the last uh, year two years now uh, 
and he he made them win games. They beat the Jets that night. They beat the Ravens, a, a playoff team, a division rival. They beat the Falcons. They beat the Bengals. They beat the Panthers. They beat the Broncos. Beat the Bengals again. They won games. Of course, a couple really close losses in there. Lost by three to the Raiders in his first start, which the Raiders proved to be pretty bad. They lost to the Chargers. They lost to the Steelers. They lost to the Bucks by three. Like, you know, there were some close losses in there. They lost by two to the Ravens at the end of the season to push them into the playoffs over the Steelers. But Baker Mayfield just had an incredible year. Average more uh, per attempt than Andrew Luck, and we talked about his fantastic season. His completion percentage was just about 64%. I don't take a ton of stock in that. But, you know, as a, as a team, as a, as a unit, Baker Mayfield unified this Browns team. This was, this was a team that won zero games the previous year. And he's on the team, and now they're winning games. They, this was probably going to be a playoff team in 2019. And I think that's just barely going to edge out Saquon Barkley. Both of them have rookie records. It, it's close, man. It really is. But I think as a quarterback, they're just going to give it to Baker Mayfield. He's going to edge it. They both had really, really impressive seasons. I think it's almost a coin toss, but I am going to give it to Baker. Defensive player of the year. This one's another easy, easy decision, and that is, of course, Aaron Donald. There are a couple of other guys that I think uh, might make a case for it. You know, Cleo Mack might get some votes, probably will. Uh, you might see Chris Jones of the Chiefs getting some votes, maybe Akeem Hicks with some votes, but it's Aaron Donald all day. It's not even a question for me. He led the league in quarterback hits. He had the most sacks in the NFL with 20 and a half, had 59 tackles from that defensive tackle, that uh, occasional 3-4 defensive end spot. Just an insane season. And his double team percentage was 70%. 20 and a half sacks, recovered two fumbles, forced four of them, had a pass deflection at defensive tackle. He was just unbelievable. To generate the type of pressure that he generates from the inside at defensive tackle is frankly unbelievable. There is no other player like him in the NFL. He is the best defensive player in the NFL year in and year out, basically upon arrival. He is incredible. A five-time Pro Bowler. It's just... You take him and you, and you compare him to some of the greatest defensive tackles in NFL history, and he stacks up pretty damn well. 60 sacks over the course of his career. 59 and a half. He was a rookie in 2014. 15, 16, 17, 18. Already has 59 and a half career sacks. These are unbelievable numbers from a defensive tackle, especially one that's double teamed 70% of the time. The next highest percentage was below 50%. And you're looking at J.J. Watt with that. There's just there's no player like Aaron Donald. We haven't seen one in the NFL uh, in a long time. You're, look, you're talking about a Reggie White maybe, and that's what Aaron Donald profiles as, a Reggie White dominant defensive lineman. Defensive Player of the Year. This one shouldn't even be close. Aaron Donald should receive MVP votes. He should. We'll get to MVP in just a moment, but we're going to talk about Offensive Player of the Year first. And there are some some guys that could receive votes for this. Drew Brees. I think uh, I think Ezekiel Elliott, Ty Gurley might receive some votes. But I'm going to give it to Patrick Mahomes, as you can tell from the graphic. We see a lot of the time that, that players that win the MVP win Offensive Player of the Year as well. And spoiler alert, but that's what I have happening. Uh, we'll talk about Patrick Mahomes a little bit later. But I think overall, he was the most impressive player in the NFL. He's the best player in the NFL. He was the best on offense. Threw for over 50 or 50 touchdowns, which is something that's been done under 10 times in NFL history. He was just an unbelievable player, and he, he edges out. Drew Brees, Ty Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley for Offensive Player of the Year. It's going to go to uh, Patty Mahomes. He's also obviously my MVP. It just, it doesn't get better than what Patrick Mahomes did this year. In his first year starting, he had only played one game. 
his entire NFL career, which was just 2017, obviously. Threw for 284 yards in that game. And um, it was just a small sneak preview of what he would bring to the table as a full-time starter in 2018. Went 12-4 and this year with the Chiefs. And he really made full use of his weapons. And there are a lot of them. There, were, you know, Of course, Kareem Hunt before he got cut. Travis Kelsey, probably the best tight end in the NFL. Tyreek Hill, the biggest weapon, arguably, in the NFL. Not the best receiver, but arguably the biggest weapon. And it, it, I mean, his tools were just on full display week in and week out, making unbelievable plays on the run, sidearm like a shortstop. Obviously, you can't stop hearing those baseball comparisons if you watch a Chiefs game. And, you know, some no-look passes. He completed some passes throwing with his his left non-dominant hand. He threw the ball 580 times this year, had 383 completions. That's a 66 flat completion percentage. Over 5,000 yards, 5,097, 50 touchdowns. His touchdown percentage was 8.6%. Very, very high. Only 12 interceptions on those 50 touchdowns. He was he was careful with the ball. Uh, his accuracy was incredible. 8.8 yards per attempt is insane. His adjusted yards per pass attempt was 9.6. Unbelievable as well. QBR of 82 flat. You know, uh, pretty solid. <laughs> pretty solid. His uh, passer rating was very, very high as well. I mean, uh, at 113.8. This is just a guy who's putting up record numbers essentially um and you know you have to look you have to look back and and think about this is basically his rookie year it wasn't but it basically is he would have shattered every rookie record by a mile touchdowns he almost doubled the rookie record yards he threw for over 5,000 yards this is unbelievable he has started just 17 games his entire career there are 17 weeks in a season, right? 16 games. I mean, he was just unbelievable. I think this is the clear-cut MVP. You look at Drew Brees, and you say, all right, Drew Brees, you had a great year. You really did. You showed up. But at the end of the day, even with your 32 touchdowns to five interceptions, it's a great ratio. Patrick Mahomes threw for over 1,000 yards more than you. Threw for almost 20 more touchdowns. And even though Drew Brees has a great completion percentage, 74.4%, unheralded in the NFL, it goes to Patrick Mahomes easily. It doesn't matter about completion percentage. It doesn't matter about how careful you are with the ball when you, you throw for over 1,000 yards less and, and 20 fewer passing touchdowns. And you could say, hey, well, that's the difference between Alvin Kamara and when Mark Ingram came back and, you know, you have Kareem Hunt who got cut and it's like, what running back do they have there? It doesn't matter about any of that. The more impressive season, the better numbers. Patrick Mahomes by a mile. He is the MVP. But that is going to do it for me, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.